So why is there all this fuss about solar flares at the moment? And what exactly is the threat to Earth? What exactly do we need to be worried about? Well, just at the moment, there are a lot of flares and there's a giant sunspot, AR2192, um, which is actually heading, facing towards Earth. Um, so anything that comes out of that, any explosion that comes out of that is going to actually come towards Earth. And you can find lots of nice pictures of sunspots on spaceweather.com. And there's a forecast on spaceweather.com of exactly what they're expecting. 85% um, chance for class M, that's kind of a medium flare. 45% chance for class X, which is the worst type of flare. And what type of actual consequences that they're going to be for that. And NASA recently has been spending an enormous amount of money on various imaging systems that circle the sun, like SOHO, and for a very good reason. So you may remember um, that the Earth has a magnetic field, and this is how, obviously how compasses work. Um, and this is what the Earth's magnetic field would normally look like. It's fairly symmetrical, kind of a donut. The problem is that when charged particles stream out of the sun, they hit our magnetic field, which acts as a shield, which is a good thing, and distort it. And the field actually increases a little bit and it also moves and it moves very very quickly and then when the sunspot goes away again it moves when the flare rather goes away again it moves back it springs back but it does so much more slowly and much more controllably you may remember when you were at school doing an experiment like this generating current using coils and a magnet and a meter and you move the magnet one way the meter goes one way you move it the other way the meter goes the other way and this basically is what is going on if you think about it the earth's magnetic field not only moves but changes in strength now a change in strength is exactly the same as a movement so any long wires, and I'm sure we can think of a few of those, we can think of phone lines, for example. We can think of electricity lines. Are going to generate large spikes of voltage and current during a really bad solar storm. Now they're already carrying large amounts of voltage and current. Um, in many cases, 250,000 volts. Uh, how about an extra quarter of a million volts on top of that? Or an extra half a million volts on top of that? Hmm, that could be a problem. Now, there are protection switches to um, help prevent this from happening. So let's see what happens when one of these protection switches is tested. Well, that failed. That switch tried to open, tried to break the current, but it failed, it couldn't do it. So what happens when this happens during a solar storm? Because we know that these switches, they're not perfect. Nowhere near, in fact, they've got quite a high failure rate. Well, if this happens during a solar storm and that switch is protecting 
a transformer, a high voltage transformer, then something like this would occur. Not very pleasant, and that is a high voltage transformer basically exploding, um, catching light and exploding. Now these high voltage transformers are very expensive, they're filled with oil to cut down on the amount of insulation that they need and to help cooling. And basically if you overload they go bang, and obviously it's not at all usable after that happens. And after that happens, this is what you've got, a blackout. Apart from a few buildings that have emergency power generation, people wandering around with torches and the like, no power. Well, how long is this going to last? Well, here's an article from a professional magazine about power transformers. Transformer manufacturer increased demands. Factories across the world are working at full capacity to produce transformer equipment. There is no slack. Expansion of production capacity would take time and require multi-million dollar investment. And here we go, transformers, 18 to 36 months lead time. So your transformer goes bang. It's going to be at least one and a half years before you get a new one. And that's if lots of transformers everywhere else haven't gone bang. How long would you like to be without electricity Seven years, eight years, nine years. This is what you're talking about. And there is no backup plan. That's the worst thing about it. That people know, the utility companies know that this can happen. Are there duplicate transformers that can be switched in? No, because they cost millions of pounds, millions of dollars each. It's not a good situation, really, if there is a big Carrington event type thing. And the Carrington event happened in the 1800s, and it was a really big solar storm. And to give you an idea of how bad it was, iron fences began to melt in some areas and sagged. Telegraph cables, which were the only long cables that they had at the time, caught fire and equipment in telegraph offices became red hot and caused fires in the offices caught paper alight things like that but the Carrington storm we know isn't as big as solar storms can get so with a blackout lasting a long time I mean even if it's only one transformer in each area you're talking about a minimum of three years remember and that is one heck of a long time what happens well a study by the officer technology assessment at the German Bundestag recommended to take precautions against extended blackouts despite their low probability well hurricanes are a low probability as well but they happen what happens? Information and communications break down almost completely. 
telephony falls, internet and email connections fail, mobile phones fail, TV no longer works, only battery powered radios, or emergency issues of newspapers, assuming that the printing plant has a power generator of course, can be used to spread information. Traffic, well with a power outage, the rail network would immediately break down. Many travellers would need to be rescued from underground trains or trains stranded between two stations in remote areas. In the cities the traffic control system would stop working, multiple accidents. Streets are clogged with accident vehicles or abandoned cars, so even if the blackout is only localised, you can't get away from it. water and wastewater and this is of more concern especially if you're talking about a blackout the last years. Production, processing and distribution of water are all dependent on pumps which are electrical. They become severely limited in many regions no more water for drinking, cooking and sanitation is available. With toilets clogged, because don't forget the sewage is also pumped away, the risk of spreading diseases increase. At the same time the risk of fire increases, people cook, try to cook without electricity at home so you're lighting a fire in the middle of your living room and trying to cook on it um, or you're using camping gas in your kitchen or whatever. Food, the complex supply chain from raw material to finished products will be interrupted. The minimum service to the public population becomes the first priority for the authorities and the successful management of this problem depends not only on the survival of many people, you will note that many people will die in a long blackout, but also on the maintenance of public order. In the industrial farms pigs and poultry often do not survive the first few hours of a blackout. So. No water, no food. So far so good. Health service. Well, we know about that, I think. All the things in a hospital and in home health care that are dependent on electricity won't happen. Drug distribution won't happen. If you depend on drugs, don't have any supply, then basically you are screwed. Financial services. Hmm. That's robust. They've made sure they know how much money you owe. Great. <sighs> However, you won't be able to get at it because the ATMs won't work. Behaviour of the population. Uncertainty in the population, which may have different effects, either increased willingness for mutual assistance or a decline in the norms of social conduct. Um, well, <laughs> we've seen what happens in hurricanes. We've seen what happens in emergencies, all the looting that goes on. Some people help each other, some people don't. But as sure as eggs are eggs, if it's going to go on for years, there will be no social order, there will be no police, there will be no government forces. The economic content, consequences of a power outage, and blah, 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 and this is about Germany, so it's not really, it doesn't really affect. Conclusion. The study makes an effort to objectivity but gives a frightening picture that makes us aware how much we need a secure power supply in our modern life. Electrical energy is not a luxury but a basic necessity. Anyone who has read the study will never again speak lightly of a blackout. So, this is why there is so much attention being put on our sun at the moment because we have realised just how vulnerable that we are. And uh, to be honest, we aren't doing enough about it. In fact, we're not doing anything about it at the moment. There is no effort to put in duplicate transformers because of the political timescales. Our politicians do not look beyond the next election. And if they were to sit down and order duplicate transformers for all the high voltage transformers, then that delivery would be in the nine to 10 year timescale. 
well beyond the next re election, so they're not concerned about it. However, a disaster like this could kill an awful lot of people and it could knock humanity back to the Stone Age near enough, or at least back to the early 1800s, late 1700s, but without the horses, because we don't have so many horses. So, not good news. I think that people ought to put pressure on their governments and pressure on their utilities to come up with some sort of a plan. If you found this video informative and useful, please like, subscribe, and of course share. It's very important to share videos like this so that the message gets out there. Thank you very much.